I'm sure Coach Krieger will get that figured out. But you you got to bring that pressure from one way, not both. Muscatine trails 35-7. We'll take another quick break. And we'll be back with more Musky football. At First National Bank, we strive to provide the best customer service both in person and online. Our mobile wallet offers you great features within our mobile app. Card controls, alerts, digital receipts. Mobile wallet is a free feature in our mobile app. Check it out today. Affordable metal manufacturing provides cut-to-length rolled metal panels for commercial, residential, and agricultural roofing. We take pride in delivering our products with a short lead time, normally three days or less. Our panels are cut to the nearest eighth of an inch for greater efficiency. And we're back as Muscatine trails 35 to seven. As Baumhoffner will kick off for the Lions. Crabtree gets it at the two. Another strong return from Crabtree out almost to the 25 yard line. Baumhoffner's pretty good. He's dropping it right in there. He's getting it nice and high and drops it right in there at the one two yard line where you can't get the touchback. Yeah, there's some big there's some big kicks packed in that little leg. He not it doesn't look like a very big kid out there, but he's doing a nice job bombing it. And really, they were unlucky to not get that onside kick. That was a nice little squibber by him, and he followed it. And I, so he's done a nice job for them all night. So the Muskies will take over at their own 25. Ace formation out of the Muskies. I should say double slot. Oh, ball on the ground. But miraculously, no. That was a... Well contested handoff there as Knipper was in his his hind pocket before he even had the ball. Multiple people reaching for that. Please <laughs> give it to me. So they'll bring up second and twelve. The Muskies just have had a hard time on first down tonight. Yeah, a little, again, with a little double slot, a little Jerry Teal special. Breaker in motion. The toss is out to Kozad. Trying to get some space. Yeah. Timeout, yeah. Linmar. You're really hoping there when you when you take your slot from the left, from the right side and bring him over to the left because you're going to really crush down on that linebacker. Credit to the Lindmark kid. He did a nice job of sort of stalemating that double team, keeping pressure there, and that allowed other guys to rally up and, and prevent that from going for very much yardage. So Lindmark's going to call a timeout here, try to preserve, maybe even try to get to that 35-point continuous clock threshold here. That's their thinking with calling these timeouts. Here with well, you're hot. Three. You're hot, right? I mean, things are going your way. You never know. Halftime, weird things happen. Teams make adjustments. Kids cool down a little bit. The mentality shifts. So, uh, you know, when you're hot and, and things are rolling your way, absolutely. They want the ball back for sure. See what they can do and if they, you know, put Muskie under pressure. So, And sometimes if you're a, an inexperienced team like we're seeing with Muscatine, sometimes halftime is the most important part of this first game of the year because you can actually sit them down and oh. show them the things you're trying to talk to them over headsets. or For sure. Yeah, and, and actually getting some of that one-on-one -on -one time and teaching time. You can make a lot of really quality improvements just from having time to talk through it at halftime. Well, the other thing you got to keep in mind is, you know, you, you've got a lot of, you got not a lot, but you've got some really critical players playing both ways. So the opportunity to see, to show them the iPad, to watch the plays, the breakdowns, to have those conversations are limited. You know, you don't have a gigantic roster. I mean, some of those kids are also playing special teams. Right. You get very little talk, chance to talk to them. So now third and 13. And now you put Musty in a situation where if it's an incomplete pass, you don't even have to use your second timeout. Batty boots out right. Finds Wrecker on the crossing route, and he's met. It's a nice tackle. Yeah, they're going to want that one to go a little deeper next time, I think. Good discipline there just from the back seven from Linmar. But knowing the down and distance, knowing to just keep things in front of you. Well, yeah, and, and you know, 
Nolan, tremendous athlete. He's going to just have to get a lead. You can't run a crossing route on third and 12 for negative one yard. You've got to get some depth there and, and get yourself out of the open a little bit. So another timeout here by Lindemar. We're going to take a 30-second break, and we'll be back with fourth down on the Discover Muscatine Sports Network. Chrysler Turf quality matters, especially in the strength and durability of our mowers. So you know your Hustler will stand the test of time. We think the difference is obvious. With our welded fabricated steel deck, high strength 11 gauge one piece frame, and the precision control of our smooth track steering, anyone can mow like a pro. Welcome back to the Discover Muscatine Sports Network. Remember to like and subscribe wherever you're watching this right now. If it's on the YouTube channel, hit that little bell. You'll get alerts whenever Discover Muscatine goes live so you can catch all musky sports action on the Discover Muscatine Network all season long. And check out the Muscatine Today Show every weekday morning. Another. Oh, oh. And that one's going to be a high short punt but yet again the turf helps him out a little good roll well that tells me too joel they they must not feel like they can long snap that ball because you know what they did there is instead of motioning their guy back they tried to go for the quick snap and sort of the idea is we'll punt this ball before you know we're going to punt it even yeah. though we're not close but they must just feel like they do not have the ability to stand 14 yards back and punt it because at this point that's what you would be in. You want to get yourself some distance. The other thing is I do like where you do the option, but it takes so much time. When you're down 28 points, you don't have time to be wasting on that kind of thing. So the Lions will take over. Jelnick in the shotgun. Henderson to his right. Johnston in motion. And they throw it out to Johnston, who drops it. That was a forward pass, and it is ruled incomplete. So the clock will stop with 2.28. Yeah, great job by the defense there. I mean, obviously the kid drops the ball, but nice job rallying up. You had two muskies coming up. And a lot of times you say, well, how's that kid so wide open? You know, he's not, he hasn't gained any yards yet. So you'll sometimes get guys that will threaten. That, that flat you're zone, gonna, as we'd call it, is, is up, up to 10 yards deep. So you might be sitting at 8 to 10. You're going to rally up and make that tackle after two and make guys, you know, teams try to throw that on you. That's fine. Johnson in motion again. Now they toss it out to Henderson who breaks a tackle, but a nice job there by the Muskie defense to, to stall him in the backfield at least. Short game. Keener again on the tackle. So just under two minutes to play now here in the first half. You can stick around, we'll have the Muscatine Lawn and Power halftime show. Oh, nice Quick little pass. dance move there. Oh, but now come he's back running the all the way, way back. He's got some blockers. And the Muskie Pursuit trying to get there as Gunther spins out and he gets to the end zone. It's going to be 48 yards in the score sheet, but he ran about 110. Yeah, he's exhausted. Get him some oxygen. Again, you know, just some missed tackles. Guy, any some of that's first game jitters some of that's guys that are being put in a position they've not been in before you know you'll have an opportunity to clean it up but you know i know coach hawkins is going to look at a play like that and say boy we had everybody where we wanted them and, you know we just didn't we just didn't wrap up didn't make tackle and kid makes some nice cuts a nice play and stays with it they get some great downfield blocking and touchdown and that extra point's good 42 to 7 here with a minute 38 to go and why that is significant is in the state of Iowa, we have a 35-point continuous clock rule. So after this kickoff... No, it does not start till the second, second half. half. It's only second yep, half? Okay. Second half. That's why, that's why they pay you the big bucks, Ben. You keep me in line <laughs> with all these rules. Yeah. Yep. In middle school, they'll start it in the first half. I'm sure they will. <laughs> probably been some years where you've said hey just go ahead and start that thing right from the out of the <laughs> gate but coach mock and i we had we had it humming there we were the ones getting the 35 points absolutely game. either that can go either way 
Well, maybe I'm wrong, Joel. Maybe they changed that. Yeah. It's always under review, and I usually pull the year, the, or the rule book out. But uh, if they did change it, I don't like it. I don't. I don't see any reason to start that clock continuous till the second half. Once it starts going, it gets going fast. Baum Hoffner to kick off. That one is going to find its way into the end zone for the touchback. And really, I, I, you know, I think we've got to give some credit. Linmar Lions special teams have really played well. You know, the blocked punt, the punt, punts under pressure. Some of that's a little bit of a function of how we're, we're operating our punts this year. But great job on them. the kickoffs have been nice and deep. The coverage has been tremendous. You know, even when the ball has not gone to the end zone, it's looked like, you know, we're going to have some, some room to get that ball out. Uh, they just do a nice job coming down, spreading out, and there's really nowhere for Crosby or excuse me, for Crabtree to run. So the Muskies will come out first and 10 at the 20. Trying to cut into this lead before halftime. See if we have any exotics put in. Batty gives the ball. I believe that's Kozad. Yeah, it's just a little uh, I formation ISO there. Just bring the fullback up through and follow him with the full with the halfback and see what you can get. Very impressed with this interior defensive line for the Lions. They've really done a good job of pushing that point of attack back. So just under a minute to play here in the first half. Double slot. There's the give to Kozad. Gain of about two. Really don't like how quick the chain gang box is getting changed. It looks like it's changing it before the play is even over. Well, it's that first. It's that first game excitement. He's yeah, really juiced. Really juiced down there. Just, really. It's it's throwing me off. Yeah. Don't worry. You have plenty of time by I like week six or seven. <laughs> I need to get my rubber band out, and so I like it, the official and just keep track of it that way. We're under 15 seconds. We are have one second differential though. Muscatine will have to snap this ball. As the ball is fumbled. But that's going to be the final play of the half as time expires. And while Linmar does recover, there is no time. A fumble recovered for the Lions by number 53, Mac Watts. That is the final play of the second And that will be the final play of the second quarter. So it's halftime here at Linmar High School. We're going to take a two-minute break, and we'll be back with the Muscatine Lawn and Power Halftime Show on the Pearl City Media Discover Muscatine Sports Network. Hi, I'm Ashley, and I'd like to take a minute to talk to you about Pearl City Media. At Pearl City Media, we develop custom marketing solutions for businesses of all kinds. Between radio, cable TV, newspaper, Facebook, Google, and YouTube ads, it can be tough to make sure your business is seen and understood by the right people. Pearl City Media understands that people are everywhere, and reaching the right kind of people for your business isn't so simple. Maybe you want to increase your business's awareness and sell more inventory. Or maybe you want to book more appointments. Or maybe you need a bump in your lunchtime traffic. Whatever your goals are, Pearl City Media will listen and create a strategic campaign focused on helping you reach those goals. We handle all the strategy, planning, execution, and we'll update you on the results of the campaign while constantly evaluating the effectiveness of your campaign. So what are you waiting for? Send Pearl City Media a message and start improving your marketing today.
Artie's Ice Cream and Grill, 609 West 5th Street, Wilton, Iowa. At First National Bank, we strive to provide the best customer service both in person and online. Our mobile wallet offers you great features within our mobile app. Card controls, alerts, digital receipts. Mobile wallet is a free feature in our mobile app. Check it out today. Affordable metal manufacturing provides cut-to-length rolled metal panels for commercial, residential, and agricultural roofing. We take pride in delivering our products with a short lead time, normally three days or less. Our panels are cut to the nearest eighth of an inch for greater efficiency and less waste. Affordable metal can even roll your panels on site. Call today for a free quote and let us become your preferred supplier. Affordable metal manufacturing. Our business is rolling. At Hustler Turf, quality matters, especially in the strength and durability of our mowers. So you know your Hustler will stand the test of time. We think the difference is obvious. With our welded fabricated steel deck, high strength 11 gauge one piece frame, and the precision control of our smooth track steering, anyone can mow like a pro. And welcome back to Linmar High School in Marion, Iowa. Joel Krausar and Ben Nitzel. It's halftime here. It's the Muscatine Lawn and Power halftime show. As ben, you know, we were just talking. This might be some of the first performances for the marching bands this year, too, because I don't think last year a lot of them got a chance to play with some of the protocols. So it's, it's the full experience again, finally, at a high school football game. Yeah, very exciting. What, what's also been exciting is if you're a Linmar Lion fan, 42 points in the first half, some explosive plays. What are some things that you've seen from Linmar that we really knew nothing about them coming in, new coaching staff, not sure what to expect. Uh, they've been impressive with how they've controlled the ball on the ground especially. Yeah, I mean, I think big, big, big shout out to their, to their offensive and defensive line, right? They've really controlled the game up front. They've been able to run the ball in between the tackles or even just slightly outside in the D-gap and really move the muskies off the ball. And when you do that, you're going to put your defensive backs into a position where they're one-on-one, -on -one, usually with you know, probably the best athlete on the field, and that puts them in a tough spot. And so I think, you know, those those five guys up front for Limar have done a great job of, of putting them in good positions. You know, and part of that, too, is they've started in good field position. So when you're in that good field position as a, as a coach, you don't feel the pressure to have to air that ball out. You can put together, you know, 40, 50-yard drive and score – that takes a lot of pressure off. We saw when Linmar had the whole field to goal, it changed up what they were able to do a little bit, maybe what they were thinking, and so they weren't quite as successful. But you know, you start with the ball on the on the 50 or the opponent's 40 or 30, uh, that opens things up, and they've done a great job of controlling that inside play. And for the Muskies, Landon Batty, the junior quarterback, he's when he's had time to throw, he's made some good throws downfield. He has the touchdown pass to Nolan Wrecker in the red zone. Um, but he's also done a nice job punting. Unfortunately, he's had to punt more than he'd like to. But some bright spots for some of the younger players for the Muskies. Well, yeah, and I think he's, he's going to do nothing but improve. I mean, I, I, you know, most people don't realize how hard it is to be down there, <laughs> knowing you can get hit, tough lines of sight. It's easy to sit up in the stands and say, oh, throw the ball here. This guy's open. Make this play adjustment, whatever. You know, you're 16, 17 years old. It's your first varsity game. Game's faster than you've ever played before. Uh, you're trying to make adjustments. You're trying to see, oh, coach said I'm supposed to watch this guy on this play. i got to pre-check and see if we're getting a blitz off the edge. There's just a lot of things coming at you, and it takes a while to put all those pieces together. I think he's had some, some nice bright spots, done a great job keeping his composure on some bad punt snaps, uh, threw the touchdown You know when he had some, some traffic in his face. And so you know, I think he's a kid that you're going to see a great amount of improvement. What we're seeing here week one and what you're seeing week 17, there's enough bright spots from him. I think you're going to see a real, a real steep increase in improvement as we go along this season. Some other positives for the Muskies. Mason Crabtree in the kick return game. He's had some nice returns. He's had a couple of seams that he's almost had a chance to break it. Uh, Linmar, credit to them and their special teams play, making some tackles. But uh, I'm just trying to think of some good things that we've seen for Muscatine. Obviously, a key focus. What are some key focuses for the Muskies this half? Well, I mean, I think <laughs> number one, tackle. I mean, you know, you, you, as a defensive coach, there's nothing more frustrating than getting guys in the right position, feeling like you've got people where you want them, and then you still make tackles. 
you know, and again, credit to Linmar. They've got some great athletes, some guys making some very nice moves out there. But you've got to keep your feet moving. You've got to stay up on your toes, and you've got to look center of gravity. And then you've got to be not afraid to come up and wrap up, right? Make that contact with that kid, that kid initiate, grab cloth, and then let the rest of your team rally up and help you finish it off. There's a lot of plays that Linmar has busted that were really blown tackles, two, three, four blown tackles. And that's very frustrating from the coaching staff because, again, you've got guys where you want them. It's one thing if you get out schemed. <coughs> right? It's one thing if, they, if you call X and they call Y and you're just not there. But when you got guys there, you want to see them make a play. I think that's the big thing. you know. And then I think offensively, try to get outside the pocket a little bit. You're, you're having trouble inside the tackles. Their line is very good. You've had a couple guys that are banged up. And so – Maybe can we move the ball outside a little bit, get your quarterback sprinting out or run some stretch plays, uh, try to do some things where you've got less guys in an area to try to deal with. Yeah, that Linmar defense has done an excellent job on first down especially of keeping Muscatine off schedule and finding, uh, finding themselves in second and long instead of second and medium or second and short. It's really kind of handcuffed some of the play calling options when you oh, when you were sure. playing behind the sticks yeah i mean it's just the that is that's a critical key you know you get an offense in a second and four situation they're in control you get them in a, a second and 12 second and nine the defense is in control it's really that first down is so critical in, in what you can do and so linmar's done a great job of stuffing muscatine a couple times we've made some silly penalties again first game of the year that's going to happen um, as much as you try to practice and drill it out of them uh, that's going to happen and so, you know, that has put us behind the eight ball, and Linmar's been able to capitalize on that. And, um, you know, th that's pretty common in all levels of football. Three big explosive plays for Linmar, resulting in touchdowns. Interception return for touchdown by Gunther. Then a ricochet catch uh, that went for 62 yards uh, for a touchdown pass that really should have been an, or thought had a chance to be an interception for the Muskies and turned into a touchdown for the Lions. And then there at the end of the first half, just a, a great run after catch by Gunther, uh, who reverses field and has the 48-yard touchdown run. That was one of the plays where you were talking about the tackling breakdowns yeah. for the Muskies. But, you know, those three big plays really, when you look at the scoreboard, are, are a huge factor, 21 points uh, off of just three, three possessions. Well, that second one especially is the gut punch, right? I mean, it's 21-7. You've come down. You've scored a touchdown. And then on that play, it looks like it should be a sack. You don't get the sack. It looks like <laughs> it should be a pick. You don't get the pick. Worst case scenario, it's going to deflect off your guy and go for an incomplete pass, and now you're looking at third and forever. Right. And instead it does, and it ricochets into their hands, and, and they catch it, and they turn it into a touchdown. So you had a bunch of opportunities for that to be a huge play for the Muskies. It ends up being a touchdown for them. Now it's 28-7, all the wins out of your sails. Uh, you know, that just happens. That's, that's high school football. Sometimes you just catch a bad break there. Uh, and that, but to me, that was that was a critical one for, for the Muskies. It really hurt them. And we're going to catch a break right now as we're going to take another short break, about two minutes, and we'll be back with more of the Muscatine Lawn and Power Halftime Show on the Discover Muscatine Sports Network. Hi, I'm Ashley, and I'd like to take a minute to talk to you about Pearl City Media. At Pearl City Media, we develop custom marketing solutions for businesses of all kinds. Between radio, cable TV, newspaper, Facebook, Google, and YouTube ads, it can be tough to make sure your business is seen and understood by the right people. Pro City Media understands that people are everywhere, and reaching the right kind of people for your business isn't so simple. Maybe you want to increase your business's awareness and sell more inventory, or maybe you want to book more appointments, or maybe you need a bump in your lunchtime traffic. Whatever your goals are, Pearl City Media will listen and create a strategic campaign focused on helping you reach those goals. We handle all the strategy, planning, execution, and we'll update you on the results of the campaign while constantly evaluating the effectiveness of your campaign. So what are you waiting for? Send Pearl City Media a message and start improving your marketing today. Ice Cream and Grill, 609 West 5th Street, Wilton, Iowa.
And we are back as the Linmar Band finishes up their halftime show. Songs in the Key, all piano-based music tonight from the Linmar Marching Band. The dulcet tones of Elton John, Billy Joel, and Stevie Wonder. Kind of a creative halftime show in the large and in charge flag corps. That's a, it's one of the larger 60-person flag corps. We don't see that very much, man. I know your marching band expertise. No, yeah, if you say so, Joel. Yeah, I don't know. It's a lot of people down there, so very impressive for them. We're looking forward to seeing the mighty Muskie marching band next week. Again, if you haven't been paying attention to what's going on at the Muscatine High School, uh, beginning short, like the day after graduation, construction and renovation began on the Muscatine Community Stadium. New bleachers, new press box, and I'm not just saying new surfaces, complete teardown. Brand new bleachers, brand new press box, a new track going in, and the crown jewel of it all is a brand new field turf facility that is going to benefit not just the athletics programs in Muscatine, but the marching band as well. We talked with Jeff Hyde last week about it at the fall sports and activities kickoff. Uh, they have lost thousands of dollars in revenue by having to cancel their annual invitational because of what rain and poor field conditions so it's not just something for our football program a real part of our community and i'm looking forward to seeing it next week yeah, absolutely i mean i think it's you know mostly for our football program but fair enough i think it's you know it'll be great for those guys and the big thing too is to be honest with you joel as far as band and and, and football and junior high you know it's really just that wear and tear you know right. so we for so long in the 80s and 90s, you tried to, well, in the 2000s as well, you tried to protect that field. You wouldn't have too many people on it. Um, you know, this is going to allow, if the varsity team wants to practice on it, then you can have your other kids on the on the big, you know, turf field, uh, right. the rural rugby field as well. Um, it allows mar marching band to be out there whenever they want, not worried about tearing stuff up. And it's so important because you get used to it and you're there and it's going to be a great facility. And, it's, you know, huge props for replacing what is probably the uh, – if, if not the worst press box in the state of Iowa, certainly the most confusing. Yeah, I won't, I won't pull punches. It's the worst press box I've been in the state of Iowa. After coaching six years at the 2A level, it is still the worst press box that I have experienced as a broadcaster and assistant coach. Well, I mean, when you got to go by, anymore. when you got to go by 30 people to, just to get to the to the door, <laughs> it doesn't make a lot of sense. But, but no, it's going to be great. And, you know, they got it done. They, they're finished ahead of time. I remember when Brady Street Stadium put their turf in. We had the first game of the year, sophomore game, Thursday night, and they were still finishing the field uh, as we were doing warm-ups. Yeah. <laughs> so that was yeah, down turf, to the wire. The so, turf is done. The track yeah. will be done. It's it's going to be an exciting time as Iowa City West comes to town. Yeah, big props week. to uh, Athletics and Activities Director Tom Olsis and his staff on making sure that got completed on time. Jeff Miller with maintenance and all those guys uh, doing what they need to do to get that thing squared away and plenty of time done. So that will be awesome. As the Muskies come out of the locker room here, we're almost ready for the second half to begin here at Linmar High School as the Muscatine trails 42 to seven. We're gonna take a 60 second break as we halftime show and get ready for the third quarter. At First National Bank, we strive to provide the wallet offers you great features within our mobile app. Card controls, alerts, is a free feature in our mobile app. Affordable. Rolled metal metal roofing. We take pride in delivering. Our panels are cut to the nearest eighth of You can even roll your panels on site. Affordable metal manufacturing.
And we are Muscatine Lawn and Power Halftime Show. We have about a minute left in halftime as the Muskies trail 42-7. to seven. I also want to make sure I mention all of our other broadcasts. Muskie Athletics this year, along with Bickford Senior Living, Muscatine Community Y, Riots and Rebels Salon, Let's Eat Catering, and River. Brought to you by Pearl City Media. We will have our Offensive Player of the Game brought to you by the Affordable Metal Manufacturing. Defensive Player of the Game is brought to you by Eastern Iowa Power Washers. And we'll have our Pearl City Media play of ice cream and grill fan cam will be available to you the lions will receive the, the kickoff here to start the second half joel got to give a shout out to my buddy chris fox and he's got his cross country muscatine varsity boys cross country is in action tomorrow in animosa uh, at their invite running starts at 8:45 a.m don't think i'll be up in time to check that out but uh, wish them nothing but the best of luck if you can't go you can follow muscatine cross country on twitter uh, at, at, at Muscatine Cross Country and get live results and also see some pictures uh, which is always a, there's something they do every two years and stuff so I was told it so again you can check them out on Twitter if you can't make it to the race just to get the results I wish them good luck tomorrow uh, as they are in action running in the morning the fall sports kickoff and that just sounds like such an incredible trip that he's able to put together with those guys and uh, some senior leaders on that team I know Aiden Armstrong uh, won his division in the watermelon stampede over the weekend as well so he's running in top form the Lions bring their kickoff return team onto the field the Muskies and kicker Sophia Thomas will kick off Thomas a senior this year. She's a standout and highly successful Muscatine girls soccer team. Coach Krieger and Coach Hawkins doing some recruiting. You know, Coach number 17, I'm trying to find it on my DJ roster. Jackson. DJ Jackson, or excuse me, TJ Jackson. He's been playing some wide receiver, but they're giving him a look at quarterback here. I anticipate so maybe some more run heavy approach Jackson will keep it again well it's game one two and you don't want to take any chances with right your, with your quarterback plus there's some gamesmanship too now you're getting this look on film so your week two opponent's gonna see this and right think they need to prepare for it as well one well, you know to the point at halftime your line has done such a tremendous job for you that if you're gonna bring in a run heavy offense you assume you're gonna still be okay Looks to me like so the Muskies have made a couple two. changes, too. Keep it over the left side. and He's got Green in front. Good blocking down the field. Jackson cuts it back, trying to get to the end zone. Hit and ball. he's going to find a way. T.J. Jackson with a 52-yard touchdown run. Pinballed in there at the end there, Joel. A couple hit, hit by a couple directions by some different Muskies. Stayed on his feet and... Was able to smash his way into the end zone. Nice run by that young man. Give him a nice little read there too. Some read option, reading. You know, this he's got a defensive man. He's in charge of reading. If he goes up, he pulls it, which he did there, and he's off to the races. Nice job by him. The extra point is good, and the Lions lead 48, 49 to seven. We're going to take a 30 second break. We'll be back with more Muskie football. Chrysler Turf quality matters, especially in the strength and durability of our mowers. So you know your Hustler will stand the test of time. We think the difference is obvious. With our welded fabricated steel deck, high strength 11 gauge one piece frame, and the precision control of our smooth track steering, anyone can mow like a pro. And welcome back to the Discover Muscatine Sports Network. 
T.J. Jackson with a 54-yard touchdown run for Linmar to open up the second half as they lead 49-7. to Mason Crabtree and Ty Kozad back deep for the Muskies. There's Muscatine just trying to find a spark here tonight. And that kick will go into the end zone for the touchback. Good decision there by Mason. So now the Muscatine offense will come on. Landon Batty still in a quarterback. Looks like Mason Crabtree now in the backfield. Doubles formation. Give us to Crabtree. Yeah, he's, he's reading that, although I don't know how much he's reading it. And when you say read, you're talking about the quarterback has the option to, to keep yes. it. Yes, so there he's looking. It looked to me like he's looking at that backside defensive end, and so they're going to – it allows them to slide everybody down to the play side. And then if that defensive end goes right down the line like he did there, your quarterback can pull that ball and take off in the space that he's vacated. If he doesn't, if he freezes in place, then you hand that ball off to Mason and let him go. Easier said than done, though. As Batty throws it downfield. A lot of contact. Incomplete, and there is a penalty flag. I think we've got a hold against Muscatine. I saw a little, little pirouette from a uh, Lion defensive lineman that didn't look voluntary. I'll tell you, if I'm Linmar, I think about maybe declining this. Looks like they're going to push him back. As the clock continues... The clock does stop on penalties. Only penalty against Muscatine. So they'll make it second and 19, second and 16, as it's half the distance. Second and 22. My math skills have failed me yet again. 9.54 to go here in the third quarter. It's no longer a breeze. We have a full-on wind tonight now, Ben. It's not as cool as it sounds, though. I will say that. <laughs> it sounds like it should be really cool here. It's good to see number 80, Daniel Adams, back in the game. Joel, he's checked back in. A noticeable limp, uh, but he is back in the game. That's good news after he was out on the sideline and out of action for a while. That run met for no gain, so now I'll make it third and 22, third and 21. They gave him a little half a yard. I know nobody cares what I would like to see, but I'd sure love to see a Raker down here at the bottom, one-on-one, -on -one, put trips up to the top side and just let him throw it up and see if a guy that's, you know, eight inches shorter than him can stop him. Nolan in the backfield with Crabtree. A little option regular option, mode. yeah. A little triple option. Oof. And uh, the only problem with that is the guy you're optioning is Mazinski, who is one of the better linebackers in eastern Iowa, and he came up and delivered a shot. Well, the other thing, too, with that option is people think it's easy to run, but you, as a quarterback, you've really got to train yourself. You've got to attack that inside shoulder of the man you're optioning because he's got to either turn towards you, towards the in belly button, towards the inside, in which case you can pitch it, or he's got to float. If you don't attack the inside shoulder, you let a good player like that string you out, and then he's going to be there to swallow you up. Fourth and 20. As Batty will punt. End over end kick, and that's going to go out of bounds. We'll see where they spot it. You saw there on that last play, he just kind of floated, kind of took that big wide sweeping arc, and sometimes that defensive man can play you both. The ball went out of bounds at the 43 for Linmar or Muscatine, so they'll take over in Muscatine territory with 8 11 to go. Now a 
another quarterback change. It's number 24 for Linmar. Reed Recker checks in. Pro Twins bring the motion back across into a regular pro lineup. He gives it to number 20, Ben Blackford, who is off to the races. And Blackford will score. So Ben Blackford gets the carry in a 43-yard touchdown run. And to be clear, there's nothing about that that's running up the score. I mean, you bring in your third-string quarterback, you hand the ball off on a belly, he comes out to the outside. I don't know where your outside contain is, where your flat player is, but not there to make the tackle, and the kid just runs it in. The Lions on for the extra point. That kick is good. Again, good pressure by the Muskies there on the extra point, but they got to get that figured out. They're bringing two guys hot off both sides. Somebody's going to get hurt. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be back with more Muskie football. Hi, I'm Ashley, and I'd like to take a minute to talk to you about Pearl City Media. At Pearl City Media, we develop custom marketing solutions for businesses of all kinds. Between radio, cable TV, newspaper, Facebook, Google, and YouTube ads, it can be tough to make sure your business is seen and understood by the right people. Pro City Media understands that people are everywhere, and reaching the right kind of people for your business isn't so simple. Maybe you want to increase your business's awareness and sell more inventory, or maybe you want to book more appointments, or maybe you need a bump in your lunchtime traffic. Whatever your goals are, Pearl City Media will listen and create a strategic campaign focused on helping you reach those goals. We handle all the strategy, planning, execution, and we'll update you on the results of the campaign while constantly evaluating the effectiveness of your campaign. So what are you waiting for? Send Pearl City Media a message and start improving your marketing today. Kick is short. Fielded by Crabtree. Crabtree's got a seam, and he's got one man to beat, the kicker, and he's going to do it. Mason Crabtree. We go to the house. House call for Mr. Crabtree. Nice 97-yard <laughs> touchdown return. No flags on the play. I like, too, how he found the kicker and just put the pressure right on him yeah. and then then broke. Hey, Don't let him get an angle on you. Congrats to the kicker, too. He did a good job of looking like he wanted to tackle him without having <laughs> to actually touch him. <laughs> nice run by Mason. A little, little glimmer of uh, hope there. and uh, Obviously not going to get the Muskies back in this game, but you, know, you want to get some of those plays you can build on and say, hey, here's something good we did. You know, probably got some good blocking out there as well, and Coach Krieger will be excited about that. Something to build on. Drake Gray on to kick the extra point here. And that kick is up, and it's good. The extra point by number nine, Parker Green, is good. Parker Green, I guess, on the kick. I had my numbers flipped. Both extra points with authority. Both were nice, <laughs> nice, solid kicks. So now the Muskies will kick off. Let's keep it right here. So we were just kind of talking about how the Muskies needing to find a spark, something to excite them a little bit, and, and maybe Crabtree just did that. Maybe bring some momentum back in your favor, try to get your defense to get a stop and chip away at this. Well, and something football coaches talk a lot about pride too, right? Not just rolling yep. over and, and saying, hey, we should just get on the bus, but, you know, being willing to continue to play and see what you can make happen. And, yeah, it's a pretty – doesn't seem like this is really a ledge you're going to be able to get off of here with the remaining time left. But you still got football. You still got a chance to work on things, uh, get better. And this is really about building towards district play, right? And get, and yep. Developing things. You've got a young quarterback. You've got a lot of guys who are getting way more minutes than they've ever gotten. And so they need to utilize this opportunity to go against another team that's trying their hardest to stop them and get better. So what do you, because really, what are you looking like to week two, three, four, five, six when it really starts to count? Right. Not that this doesn't count, but if you can start playing your best football week four or five, now you're cooking. 
Short high kick, takes a bounce. TJ Jackson with the return. Ooh, nice and spin. Spin move. Now he's got some room to run. And Mason Crabtree is there to say no more. Well, TJ is going to be going over to the sideline begging to get back in. I don't think coach is going to let him, but he's going to be begging to get back in. Now we got a flag here after the play. Great spin move by that young man there. Let's see what this flag is. The flag was thrown in the direction of the Linmar sideline. So I don't know if there was some extracurricular blocking going off the field or not. Well, there was a little extracurricular shove at the end too, so interesting to see what we got. An unsportsmanlike conduct call against Linmar. And we don't know what number it was called upon. But it, it looks like what happened, I kind of saw the tail end. The blocker blocked off the field and just kept riding him into the ground, which is a point, it used to be a point of emphasis. I don't know if it still is. But once they leave the field, you got to leave them alone. You got to let yeah. them get up. And, and it is unsportsmanlike. So whomever received the call, that, that's essentially a technical foul. So it's a second one would result in a disqualification. Unbalance here to the bottom, to the defensive right. Means they got the tight end over there. They've also got the split end on the line, so tight end is ineligible. No run that way. And they give it to Blackburn again, and he's got a seam again. 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown for Ben Blackburn. Two carries over 100 yards. Oh, his own players did it. We're able to knock him down. We should get some tips. <laughs> you know, there it's just you got you got people over over penetrating and just creating some gaps and holes. And listen, give the kid credit. Kid's fast. He's running hard. He's getting upfield, running north south, not waiting around for any. Still in the third quarter, 62 to 14 is the score. Extra point team comes on. You usually don't put a bunch of substitutions in on your special teams. So you have starters who are thinking, I don't need to, I'm not going back in. And then right. all of a sudden they've got to, to run in on a, on a field goal team. Well, and this is especially true because, again, you know, you've had a little bit, unfortunately, it seems like attrition. They're not as robust. I mean, here, these are two, you know, pretty good-sized high schools, especially Linmar, and neither one is just bustling with monster sidelines. Right. You know, and that's, that's kind of a, an issue statewide. And so then even more so, to your point, you don't have two or three deep at your special teams positions. You've kind of got your guys and you got to go with it. So I saw a report from Keith Murphy in Des Moines this week that statewide, and it's not just football, all activities the state is estimating are down 28% this year all activities yeah that's not too surprising i don't i don't know if we want to climb on that soapbox here in week one we can, <laughs> okay we can, we can come back to that later but yeah it's a it's a, i would say this it's certainly a disappointing trend um to see less kids you know involved and i i know football has its own particular concerns that people have that i may or I, you know, I don't necessarily completely agree with but i understand that but yeah to your point it's it's activities wide you know it's, it, it is cross country it is football it's volleyball it's well, swimming it's, it's, it's all band. those things it's things like yeah. that too yep yeah. Everything except maybe show choir. It seems like those guys got more people they can handle at all times. But everything else. It's, it's an elite group. I'm a, I'm a show choir uh, veteran. Yeah, said like a show choir veteran. <laughs> 7 12 to go here in the third quarter. It is continuous clock, but it stops after scores, so it hasn't run much. Offsides. Offsides but no flag. I was going to let her roll. Kozad gets the kick here. Nice little recovery. Yeah, hopefully they'll at least have a conversation with Linmar about getting those kids onside. That didn't quite catch a number, but the guy was at least two steps off sides. Yeah, it was, it was R4 over there on the sideline, or on the right side of the formation. I mean, that's a safety issue. That's why offsides matters on kickoffs. 
Yeah. <laughs> Can't get that big of a head start. Well, it's a competitive advantage, too. Yeah. I mean, geez. You know, blind Phil could have made that call. It was unbelievable. Batty's still in a quarterback for the Muskies. And this is still great game experience. I mean, every snap, this right. is, is better for him, right? He's getting a chance to make those reads, be under that pressure. Tackle for a one-yard loss is Crabtree. Shotgun formation here for Batty. Low snap. Throwing the out wide to Lane, intended receiver. That's a long throw. And pass is broken up. Yeah, people don't always realize those, those outs, the chair routes, the you know anything going to the outside, even some of those bubble screens, they're long throws. You know, you watch in the NFL in college, and then those guys got such strong arms, it looks like you're just, oh, we're just dinking and doinking at three yards out. But it's a, you're throwing the ball it, long. Especially with the wide way. hash, the wide hash of the high school Absolutely. game, too. So 5-10 to go here in the third quarter. And Muscatine's going to call a timeout. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be back with more Muskie football on the Discover Muscatine Sports Network. At First National Bank, we strive to provide the best customer service both in person and online. Our mobile wallet offers you great features within our mobile app. Car controls, alerts, digital receipts. Mobile wallet is a free feature in our mobile app. Check it out today. Affordable metal manufacturing provides cut-to-length rolled metal panels for commercial, residential, and agricultural roofing. We take pride in delivering our products with a short lead time, normally three days or less. Our panels are cut to the nearest eighth of an inch for greater efficiency and less waste. Affordable metal can even roll your panels on site. Call today for a free quote and let us become your preferred supplier. Affordable metal manufacturing. Our business is rolling. And we're back at Linmar High School. Joel Krausar and Ben Nitzel here on the call on the Discover Muscatine Sports Network as the Muskies sit third and 12 here, 5.07 to go in the third. Batty back deep, throws the screen to Wrecker. He great. breaks the tackle. That's a great play by Wrecker, too, because that screen was just a little too slow. And there was a lot of time for the defense to see what was happening there. So to catch that ball, knowing there's a lot of guys around, make a nice cut, get something out of there. Obviously, would love to have got another six, eight inches and get that first down. But nice play by Nolan. I see. This go for it here. Practice your fourth and one play. I mean, I mean nothing to lose. No, not, not when you're giving up 60-yard runs. Nice sneak. Quarterback sneak. Nice sneak. Good for the first down. As the Muskies keep this drive going. You know, and, and, and let's be clear here. If, I, if I'm the coach, I'm not making any excuses for us having a bad night like this, but I'm not the coach. As a semi-impartial observer, you've got a very young team out there, a lot of guys who are these, these are the first significant minutes of varsity football they've gotten. You talked about in the opening, you graduate 25 seniors, many of which were two or even three-year starters. And so, you know, for a lot of guys, you're out here, and this is the first time. This is this is a great experience. This team is going to get better as the season goes on. There's no doubt about it. Pass deep Love outside. It. Love it. And it's caught. That's going to be a gutless offensive pass interference call that I just cannot understand. And that's Wrecker. I really hope it's not called on the offense. I guarantee you they're going to call it on the offense. That's just like we. if you've got a big kid, they're going to call it on the big kid. Now, to be fair, I don't know how far I can see, how well I can see out there, but, you know. Let's see what it is. The 
officials discussing. Is it possibly of offsetting? I don't know. I may have to apologize. It may not be offensive. Maybe they're looking at the scoreboard, they're going to wave it off. I How long know. it's taking to make this call is offensive. Let's just figure it out here, folks. They did stop the clock. So that's good. They nope. called defensive hey, pass right. interference. My apologies. It is declined. My apologies. You used the right adjective, though. Had they called it the other way, it is a gutless call. Great catch by Wrecker, though, in transition. Yeah. You know, he's got a guy in his face clearly grabbing onto him, uh, makes the catch, and turns that thing into a, a big, big game. Big game. Again, that's what I'm talking about. Young team. These guys are gelling. This is the first yeah. passes he's catching, you know, from Batty. Uh, and this, they're going to do nothing but improve as the season goes on. It's going to be a big connection for Batty. A little jet sweep screen. It's going to get maybe a short yard. Well, and that's a nice thing, you know, sometimes when you do get those long official discussions, you know, Nolan Raker had that big catch and run and gets a little tired. He's got enough time to sort of rest and recover that you can come back to that to that toss. Now, granted, they probably didn't get out of that what they wanted, but the ability to be able to come right back to that on second down because he got a little break there during the discussion is nice. As the Muskies take the to the line of scrimmage, it's second and nine. What I would call a doubles formation here. Give us to Kozad. He breaks the tackle on the outside, but his second man in able to wrap him up. Well, nice job there. And that's what we've been talking about on the other side of the ball, right? You give him up a little bit of yardage, but coming up, breaking down, grabbing cloth and making sure that, hey, that ends up being a one or two yard gain instead of allowing him to bounce it to the outside and go. A good open field tackle. So third and eight off of the, after the short gain on second down. As Batty with Kozad behind him. Oh, oh, we got him, there you go. Good job by Raker there. Telling his outside guy, get off the line so I can run a route. Play action pass, throws it up and deflected. And that's just smart. You can see there at home by the senior. He looks out there and sees that he's covered up. That means he is ineligible to go downfield. Yep. It also means that that, is the, that kid is in the wrong formation. Right. And so he's telling him, hey, back up, get out of there so I can run out there. So that's very smart that, play by the senior. Yeah, that's leadership too. It's, it's not getting frustrated. It's teaching your teammate, making sure they understand and, and knowing down and distance and situation. Exactly. And also, I guess, kudos to uh, Luke Hardy out there for listening. Right? Yeah, that's, <laughs> looking, that's a key. Looking inside, not being in La La Land or on an island, just paying attention to his deal, but looking inside, seeing the seeing what Wrecker's telling him and doing it. Now, Batty, he's got room to run. And he tucks it up and under, and he is going to be tackled just short of the first down. Come up about a yard short. as the Lions will take over on downs, but a much better offensive possession there for the Muskies. Yeah, stuff to build on, some pass completions, some runs, um, you know, just doing some things better. Again, getting those reps, getting that experience, not against your friends, not at practice, but in a game against an opponent is going to be nothing but beneficial for this team. As the Muskie defense comes onto the field, Reed Wrecker for Linmar will stay in at quarterback. And they're going to call a timeout. I think there were some personnel questions as the play clock was about to expire. We're going to take a quick 30 second break. We'll be back with more Muskie football on the Discover Muscatine Sports Network. Wrestler turf quality matters, especially in the strength and durability of our mowers. So you know your hustler will stand the test of time. We think the difference is obvious. With our welded fabricated steel deck, high strength 11 gauge one piece frame, and the precision control of our smooth track steering, anyone can mow like a pro.
Hi, I'm Ashley, and I'd like to take a minute to talk to you about Pearl City Media. At Pearl City Media, we develop custom marketing solutions for businesses of all kinds. Between radio, cable TV, newspaper, Facebook, Google, and YouTube ads, it can be tough to make sure your business is seen and understood by the right people. Pearl City Media understands that people are everywhere, and reaching the right kind of people for your business isn't so simple. Maybe you want to increase your business's awareness and sell more inventory. Or maybe you want to book more appointments. Or maybe you need a bump in your... And we are back here on the Discover Muscatine Sports Network. 10 seconds left in the third quarter. Linmar takes over on downs, first and 10. Reed Wrecker for Linmar, the quarterback. Should be the last play of the half. He gives it to Blackburn. Who is stopped. Much better job by the D-line there. Getting into their gaps and holding their positions. And that will be the end of the third quarter. So we're going to take another 60-second break. And we'll be back with fourth quarter action here for Muskie Football. Artie's Ice Cream and Grill, 609 West 5th Street, Wilton, Iowa. At First National Bank, we strive to provide the best customer service both in person and online. Our mobile wallet offers you great features within our mobile app. Card controls, alerts, digital receipts. Mobile wallet is a free feature in our mobile app. Check it out today. Welcome back here to the Discover Muscatine Sports Network. It's the beginning of the fourth quarter. I'm Joel Krausar with my partner, Ben Nitzel. And Ben, it's been, a, it's been a tough haul for the first three quarters here for the Muskies as they trail 63 to 14. Yeah, a lot of lessons to learn tonight. You know, a lot of experience gained by a young team. Big props to Muscatine student section traveled incredibly well. I was very impressed. You know, this is not a short trip to get all the way up here to the northeast Cedar Rapids. I feel like we were just outside of Clinton after we drove all the way out here. Uh, and big props to the Lindmar band sticking around. I love, I love when the band sticks around. I, do too. I don't, I'm surprised it doesn't happen more. You'd think they'd want to play in front of all those people, but very nice to kind of transition into a pep band type thing. I have always said that that's a, one of the most important parts of your home field is your band. Toss for Linmar. Blackburn oh. again. We got another penalty. That's that should have be been a flag. Yeah. Goodness gracious! What was the? I was a low block. Well, it was. I think it was Jaime Martinez coming across, and uh, he just got he, he, great job scraping, and he just got he just got tackled. Uh, it was actually Jacob Novak. Nice job scraping down the line. Uh, got to the point of attack, and then all of a sudden he just got tackled from behind by the Linmar player. And they call the hold, and that will push yeah, back. Good call. The Lions another 10 yards. You know, Jacob make a nice read there, and, and exactly what you want him to do. Got to the point of attack, and then you can't stop that. So second and 15. Muskie's rolling into a cover three look here. Pre-snap. And Wrecker will boot out left. Take a shot down the field. Yeah, and they're going to have to, Muskegon's going to have to get something figured out there on the corner. That's Again, you're getting into some guys getting some, some backups right. now, getting some snaps. But you go roll into that cover three look, you cannot have your corner sitting at five yards playing, playing press. Got to get back on that too. Is it possible they were in like a cover one? Were there a man out there? And no, because and the reason I'll tell you is we you can watch what those what are your defensive backs looking at. And so that those defensive backs are all staring at, at the quarterback. So they then they're going to be in zone. Yeah. If they're in man, now again in high school that's not always the case. But you know if you're in man, you're going to be staring right at that guy because where he goes, you go. So you got to be high snap over the head. 
Muscatine's got an opportunity here. His record Wrap just up. scrambling. Uh oh. And now oh, he's no. broken free. Oh, no. And he's got a big block downfield. And they do throw the flag. So this is coming back on the blind side block. As Wrecker's going to score, but it's coming back. As you cannot, the player has to be turned and facing your direction when you come back to block. Well, or you, if you, if he's not quite spun around, you can engage him with your hands. And I'll give the Lindmar kid credit. He, he did clean he him out. He yeah. could have crushed him, and he did slow. He did slow it down, uh, but. Yeah, he did not engage him with his. It almost has to turn into a basketball screen, right? In some sense, if the guy's not looking, you almost have to, yeah, hold your you hands know, up and yeah, just get in the way. And really just kind of uh, yeah, be in his way, and he, he, he did he, not do that. He engaged with his shoulder, so that's what they're going to call yep. the blind side block. But you know, pro, like I said, props that kid because he he could have put him onto Funny Street. Yeah, and he, he did. Yeah, he he, 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 he knew the rule. He wasn't taking a head hunt shot. No, it just was enough to draw the penalty. But okay, again. A great hustle play by the Linmar backs, just giving it all they got, and Muscatine unable to bring them down and, yeah. and scrambling for a long, long touchdown. Should run. have been tackled at the two, and uh, instead he went, you know, to the house. Were it not for the, and you know, the worst part too is if you're if you're a coach in that situation, that that back block didn't spring him. No, no, you know he, he was gone. He, he, he was, was gone. already past him. He was gone. But the, like you said. The young man wasn't trying to head hunt. He was just trying to make a hustle play yeah. and block. Seven years ago, that would be a legal block because yeah. he because yep. he because he didn't crush him, right? Right. He didn't. He, he laid off him. They would they would not have called that. But the rule has changed about three times. All with the intent of improved safety, which I, I applaud those efforts, but it can be frustrating sometimes. A little bit of an inverted wing up there to the top of the screen. I imagine they're going to hand it off here since uh, record yeah. did just run 98 yards. Yeah, a little toss sweep. Toss out to Blackburn. Need a tough corner. There you go. And Martinez finishes him off, pushes him out of bounds. Blackburn with a nice run. And that brings it up to fourth and 13. Imagine we'll see some sort of a punt. Yeah, you know, <laughs> you might. But to your point earlier, sometimes you almost just think about going for it because you don't want to bring in starters who are cold That's out true, to do yeah. the punt. You know, and you think, well, you know, we, we might only have one guy that can do a really a, – a, they were confident in a long snap. And, right. And so you might just end up saying, hey, we're going to – you know, if you think you got the personnel to fill it in, you fill it in. If you think well, there's yeah, a chance so you're going to – Lamar's going to call a timeout, and you see – we see – Jelnick stretching on the sideline, the starting quarterback. I believe he's also the punter. So it looks like he might be kind of trying to re <laughs> rewarm yeah. up the body. Now the good news is it's still real warm here, right? True. You know, if this is if this is week seven, you might go, you might just run <laughs> it because everybody's cooled down after not playing for at least five minutes. But here, you know, it's warm and hot enough that doesn't take long to no to re reboot the elasticity. I feel loose, and that's saying something. <laughs> So nine minutes, 11 seconds to play here. Muskies trail 63 to 14. And they've got Linmar in a fourth and 15. And you mentioned it earlier on one of the Blackburn long runs. At no point has it, has Linmar done anything that you, I would consider running up the score. Like they're just running their offense and yeah. they've gotten a couple of big plays out of it with their third and fourth string backs. For sure. And you know, as a coach, I always felt like it was really about personnel. I don't even care if people throw. If you're up, if you're up 50 points and you're throwing, listen. If that's your offense, yeah. you know, if, if my kid's a third string quarterback and he finally gets in, I sure love to see him throw a pass. It's it's always to me about who do, who do you have in. If you got your studs in, it doesn't matter if you're running or passing. You're trying to embarrass us. If you got your third team in, you just you got to run your stuff. And Jelnick with the punt. Yeah, and get out of there. Punt. Oh, great, great bounce. And that ball is going to get downed inside the 25-yard line. So the Muskies will now take over. It'd be interesting if we see Connor Christensen or if they decide to stick with Batty. Could make a case either way.
And it looks like it is. Batty. Looks like number 12 yeah, still Batty in there. Yeah, still in there. Little pistol spread here. Kozad still behind him in the tailback position. Nice. A little bubble screen action. Gets it out to Wrecker. Big stiff arm. Puts his shoulder down. Nice. And now run. he fumbles oh, it at oh the no. end. Did he hit the ground? No, but he was, he was going down when the ball Goes came out. out. Yep. Tried to extend and get a couple extra yards, which, again, when you got the first down, you don't need to do. But he'll learn that. Yep. Great play up to that point. And the turnover will give the ball back to Linmar. Looked like a little RPO there. Maybe a little predetermined RPO, but. Got the job done. Yeah. And like you said, that's a learning experience. Even veteran players sometimes have to be reminded. Oh, you see that in the NFL. Yeah. There's no doubt about that. Yeah, it's I mean, a tragic flaw. I mean, what you love about a player like that is that they fight for every yard and they try to make a big play when they have the ball in their hands. And yeah. uh, that's that's the risk-reward. Yeah. And like I said, if you got a yard or two to go to the first down and it's third down, that's what you want to do. But if you're well past the sticks, just keep that thing in tight and don't worry about the extra yard or two. Again, learning experience. Double tights. Give us the Blackburn. At this point, we're just hoping we don't see a busted play. <laughs> New quarterback in for Linmar. Marcus Colcrick. Colrick, excuse me, in at quarterback. Connor Christensen checks in for the Muskies. Looks like maybe he's going to play a little linebacker. Yeah, he's been playing safety. Yeah. It looks like he, yeah, it looks like they've bumped him up to the second level there. He did play linebacker as a sophomore, inside linebacker. So Colrick in the shotgun. Jump by the Muskies. That's going to bring up second and five. A little excitement. Young man got in, getting a chance to play. A little over eager. Again, frustrating because you're, you're always telling guys, just key the ball. All you do is look at the ball. Second down five from the 38. So second and five. Cole Rick huddles up the Lions. It's Cole Rick. And Blackburn in the backfield. Give us to Blackburn. And he's met in the backfield. A timeout call? Good little helmet. Push. Yeah, helmet came off, so. Evan Frankie with a nice play on the outside there. Third and three here for the Muskies. We know the blitz will be coming. It'll be interesting to see if Coach Hawkins decide to send one or two. Looks like at least one coming from the lower part of our screen. Looks like gonna sh Muskies going to show Delay two. Delay game penalty on the uh, Lions. So I'll make it third and eight. So third and eight. Looks like the Lions are going to go for it here. Yep. Toss out to Blackburn. Cuts it back. And the Muskies are going to stop for the. For that's the only third down, Joel. That's, yeah, that's why they went for it. <laughs> As a defensive guy, I always get frustrated. That you, I feel like they, they've been very lenient in the last seven years about letting those motion guys be coming forward. And I know he's not going forward forward like it's Canadian football, but even still, he's not he's technically not supposed to be attacking the line of scrimmage at all. And, and, they, and again, it happens on both sides. Right. I'm not saying that they call it consistent, but I just feel like as a defensive guy, it always makes me upset. The other thing I noticed on that particular play is the whole offense wasn't set completely when he went into motion, so that's the other, other yeah. side of it too. But that's nitpicky and... 
It's it, it's usually not called on either side. Well, especially in this scenario. Yeah. Good read by another the Muskies. De another delay of game. So another five-yard penalty here. Isn't the game clock supposed to keep running still even on a... Matt Keener did a great job reading the snap count there. Came flying in. He was going to be causing all kinds of problems. Probably good for the Lions if they got a delay of game. Is there what, did you ask? Uh, I thought that the play clock was supposed to keep running even on the penalty, or the, the game clock, but I don't know. Toss sweep out to Blackburn. There's the is, turnover. There's the turnover on downs. And the Muskies will regain possession as Max Keck able to tackle Blackburn and turn over the Lions. So the Muskie offense comes on the field. Landon Batty, still a quarterback. Goes at it running back. Give it to Kozad. Again, just nothing doing in the middle of that uh, that defensive line. No, even with some substitutions, Linmar's done a good job of continuing to be very strong up front. You know, they're also playing very patient. You know, one of the things you want to see your defensive line do, especially when running that forefront, is get into their gaps and get to heel depth, right? So your feet aren't getting any further than the heels of the offensive line. And you do that because if you rush up, if they get by you, then you've created holes. And so a lot of times those real elusive running backs get by a big lineman, and now there's a hole where he was. He's no longer doing his job. Low snap handled. And that is number 13, Demarcus Powell on the carry. So third and 10 for the Muskies. See number 42, Matt Keener also and playing some tight end here on offense. Bootleg right for Batty. Nice that throw. Pass is completed on the curl route. That's Luke Hardy on the catch for the first yep. down. A nice job by Luke too, was in some traffic. Ran a nice route, planted his foot, came back towards the ball there. Was able to get a little separation and make the catch. Sawyer, Zach, the sophomore, also in the ball game here for the Muskies. These are the kind of plays that are going to, you know, hopefully pay dividends as you start getting into a little bit later in the season. Keener on the carry. Gain of about two on first down. He's calling the play. Batty has looked comfortable, even in some uncomfortable situations. He hasn't looked rattled. Yeah, the poise has been very good. Very good. Powell on the, the outside run. Oof. A little hip toss there yeah. at the end. I believe the technical term for that, Joel, is a bulldogging headlock. Is that, is that from the British Bulldog? Uh, no, just a general. That's a, just a general professional wrestling move there. Okay. My, my professional wrestling knowledge is lacking, as you and I have discussed. Uh, this was not a big thing on Saturday mornings in our household. 30 seconds left to go here. I'm being told that I can watch it now as an adult. I just haven't had time. And that's my fault. Batty takes a snap to under 20 seconds. Gives it to Powell, who's got a seam and some speed. He gets the first down. Are they going to let it run, or are they going to take the timeout and try to punch it in? I think they're going to let the clock run. Yeah, We're yeah. under five Looks seconds like here. Run. And that's going to do it here for regulation in the game. It's 63-14. 
We'll be back here with our High V post game show on the Discover Muscatine Sports Network. Portable Metal Manufacturing provides cut to length rolled metal panels for commercial, residential, and agricultural roofing. We take pride in delivering our products with a short lead time, normally three days or less. Our panels are cut to the nearest eighth of an inch for greater efficiency and less waste. Affordable Metal can even roll your panels on site. Call today for a free quote and let us become your preferred supplier. Affordable Metal Manufacturing. Our business is rolling. At Hustler Turf, quality matters, especially in the strength and durability of our mowers. So you know your Hustler will stand the test of time. We think the difference is obvious. With our welded fabricated steel deck, high strength 11 gauge one piece frame, and the precision control of our smooth track steering, anyone can mow like a pro. Hi, I'm Ashley, and I'd like to take a minute to talk to you about Pearl City Media. At Pearl City Media, we develop custom marketing solutions for businesses of all kinds. Between radio, cable TV, newspaper, Facebook, Google, and YouTube ads, it can be tough to make sure your business is seen and understood by the right people. Pearl City Media understands that people are everywhere, and reaching the right kind of people for your business isn't so simple. Maybe you want to increase your business's awareness and sell more inventory. Or maybe you want to book more appointments. Or maybe you need a bump in your lunchtime traffic. Whatever your goals are, Pearl City Media will listen and create a strategic campaign focused on helping you reach those goals. We handle all the strategy, planning, execution, and we'll update you on the results of the campaign while constantly evaluating the effectiveness of your campaign. So what are you waiting for? Send Pearl City Media a message and start improving your marketing today. And welcome back. We're wrapping things up here at Linmar Stadium in Marion, Iowa as the Linmar Lions defeat the Muscatine Muskies here in week one, 63 to 14. This is your High V post game show. I'm Joel Krausar with my partner, Ben Nitzel. Ben, that's a scoreboard wise, it's a tough start for the Muskies, but lots to learn from, lots of good teachable opportunities for this young team. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, I think uh, Coach Tom Wilson used to always quote Shawshank Redemption and say, get busy living or get busy dying. And I think, you know, nobody likes to take a beating like this uh, to open the season, but you got a very young team, young quarterback, a lot of guys getting tons of minutes they've never had before playing at the varsity level. And so, this is a teaching moment. How do we get better? Where do we go from here? What you know? Again, with district play, we want to be hitting on all cylinders week four and five. So yes, we would love to go undefeated. We would run, love to run the table. We certainly don't want to open up in this manner. But get onto that film, get into that tape, use that as a way to motivate guys and say, hey, listen, you got to go hard in practice because when you get to Friday night, it's no joke. You know, you're playing five A football. Everybody you play has got players. Everybody you play has got talent. And this, this schedule is no joke, and we got to be ready to go. And you mentioned Landon Batty a little bit there, and we now our affordable metal manufacturing offensive player of the game. Is that our is that our pick? Absolutely. You know, and I think it's easy to say, well, you know, we obviously didn't have a great offensive night, so you just picked the quarterback because you talk about him a lot. But I think he's the pick for a couple of reasons, right? First of all, great job on fourth down showing composure. We did a lot of punting, unfortunately. He had some snaps that weren't great, got some balls off, got us out of trouble. Uh, I thought it had some nice completions uh, and just showed a lot of poise in the pocket. And again, it's a, it's really difficult to stress how uh, hard it is to go out there and play quarterback at the varsity level, your first game uh, with all these things coming at you, all the decisions you have to make, all the things you're supposed to be looking for, the things you have to remember. It's a difficult task. I thought he acquitted himself well, had some nice plays, had some things he's going to learn from. Uh, and I think that, you know, in, in the absence of any real breakout performances, I thought he did a nice job all night long and very consistent and expect him to improve greatly as the year goes on. Yeah, good first outing. Lots lots to be uh, impressed with and can build off of with the, with the junior quarterback. Our defensive player of the game presented by Eastern Iowa Power Washers is Matt Keener from his linebacker position, and he played a little bit of strong safety too, I think. Uh, just was all really – he was the second level tonight, did a fantastic job. I had him for several tackles uh, and just always seemed to be in the right place at the right time. And, and in a game where obviously some big explosive plays happened, 
he has been uh, – Oh, he was a he was a bright spot on the defensive side of the ball. Well, I think you look for you look for guys who are playing hard for four quarters, even even in the face of maybe you know insurmountable odds. And so I thought even there in the last drive, you know, he's anticipating snap counts, coming up hard, playing hard, and that's the kind of hustle and effort you can build a defense around. And then our play of the game, presented by High V, who's also our post game show sponsor, our play of the game, Mason Crabtree. Oh yeah, ninety eight yard kickoff return for touchdown. Yep. Showing you just what he's capable of. When, you know, when he puts his head down and runs, has some, some ability to shift and move and make some plays. And great job by Mason to get open. Got some blocks, but he did a, the lion's share of that work. And a really exciting play for the Muskies. Nice thing to build on. Nice thing to build on. And we get to come back home next week and uh, work on those developments. Usually they say the biggest jump is from week one to week two. Not only are we jumping back home, we're jumping into a brand new facility. So come out. And check out the brand new facility at Muscatine High School next week as Iowa City West comes to town. Yeah, tons of storylines, really, Joel, because you've got obviously the new facilities you mentioned. You got Jeff Hyde and his band back in action. We're excited to see what they've got for us after not seeing them last year. And then, you know, this is a bit of a homecoming. You've got DJ Hawkins, who was at Iowa City West. You know, some of the guys he coached with are his protégés. Is it Matt Durham still there? Andrew Durham. Andrew Andrew Durham is the offensive offensive coordinator. Yeah, he's the younger. Yeah, Yeah, Andrew Durham is back. Uh, You know, some other guys that were there. Their head coach was coached at Muscatine with us for a while, so very nice guy. So, you know, a lot of familiarity between the staff. So a lot of uh, of, uh, interesting storylines as we get ready to open the season. And West is starting a new quarterback for the first time in three years. Marcus Morgan is gone. He's now pitching and playing baseball at the University of Iowa. So a lot of moving parts for the Trojans as well. So a lot to look forward to next week. That's going to do it for us tonight. Again, thanks so much to our team here at Pearl City Media and the Discover Muscatine Sports Network. And make sure you, you help out our sponsors who are bringing you the, this action all year long. Again, our high V post game show. And uh, we look forward to seeing you guys next week. And uh, make sure you check out the Discover Muscatine newspaper every week for all of your ads as well as the Muskie sports schedule. That's going to do it for us tonight. Good night, everybody. Good night.